Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing the Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter 007 limited edition. It's also known as the James Bond 40th anniversary watch. It was launched in 2002 in a limited edition of 10,007 pieces to coincide with the release of James Bond in Die Another Day, which was the 40th anniversary of the official James James Bond film franchise that began in 1962 with Dr. No. So this watch, although long associated with Pierce Brosnan on screen, was actually the first explicitly Bond branded Omega product. So this is a landmark piece. The branding is subtle. Even from an arm's length, it's not clear that there's a 007 motif on the dial. Get close though and you can see it quite easily. The good news is the basic watch is one of Omega's best and all time great. The timepiece is 41.5 millimeters in diameter and stainless steel, 11.8 millimeters thick. They were thin in the pre-coaxial era. 47.5 millimeters from lug to lug and if you include the end links of the bracelet, then it is 52.3 millimeters across the wrist with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw this on my wrist, 16 centimeters in circumference, and I actually owned the standard version of this watch, Sun's Bond branding. I still own it. It was my graduation watch. I adore it. I'll never sell it. I'm lucky. It happens to be a great timepiece. It's accurate. It's durable. It's still usable as a diver, and given its age, it's right on the cusp of becoming a legitimate vintage watch. I think on the bracelet, you want a wrist of at least 15 centimeters circumference to wear this. I think on a strap, then it becomes small enough for you to wear on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. And it is quite flat. Again, this is something that was lost in later coaxial Omega products. The bracelet is a little bit of an iconic piece, somewhere between a dress bracelet and a sports bracelet. Like a sports bracelet, it's robust, but like a dress bracelet, it has this rounded off profile on the flanking links, plus these little polished intermediates that get a bit, a bit of a formal aesthetic. We have removable links fixed by pins and sleeves, so you'll need a block and punch to size, but we have a couple of different ways to size. Full-size links, half-size links. We have a single full deployment clasp that is Bond branded externally, and it is a twin trigger release with a single fold deployment, and then inside a fold-out extension for use over a dive suit or just a thick winter coat or sweater. Now, it's important to note that this is a thick gauge clasp. It still feels redoubtable today. And back in the late 90s, this is considered to be the clasp that generally forced Rolex to reconsider its clasp and bracelet quality. As they made huge upgrades in the 2000s, this was what spurred them to action. Now, the design originally came out in 1993 as the Seamaster Diver 300 meter, and I don't think anyone believed that more than a quarter century later, this design would still be in production. Previously, Seamasters had been completely redesigned every five to ten years, and there wasn't a whole lot of design continuity, so while the name itself might have rivaled the Rolex Submariner, there was nothing like the evergreen quality that the sub could boast. The total absence of planned obsolescence. Well, this watch beat that. This watch ended that. Uh, that is an artifact of history. As this watch has now been around for most of my life in its current form. Yes, it's been mechanically upgraded, but the design will never be obsolete. We have a shear guard profile for the crown, the helium escape valve for saturation divers to let helium out of the case should it build up during a dive. 300 meters water resistant. We have a 120 click bezel with an anodized aluminum insert. Let's take a look at the loom. And you can see that all three hands and the bezel pearl are well loomed. We have the skeleton style hands that have come to be known over the years as the James Bond hand. And in an upgrade over my diver 300 meter, which was the 253180, this one features applique hour indices and an applique 007 logo. So rather than printed features, that's actually placed on the dial to give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional look. Now you have a matte blue base where you'd normally have the Omega Wave. You have that repeating 007 logo. You also have the applique 007 logo. The watch features a hacking or stop seconds function, and it also features a quick set date. So you can rapidly cycle the date should the watch run down. And the case back here features some changes from the standard. No hippocampus or seahorse. Instead, we have the 007 uh, opening shot, that rifled view that 
always opens the Bond films. Uh, it's actually frosted in its center. The characters are polished, and then outside we have Set Nation. Of course, 40 years of James Bond, Dr. No to Die Another Day, 1962 to 2002. Individual numbering, 10,007. It's not terribly limited, but the watch is special. It's a special edition more than a limited series. Remember, they've made hundreds of thousands of these, so in the scope of that kind of volume, 10,000 is pretty exclusive. Inside the case, Omega Caliber 1120, which is a modified and upgraded version of an ETA 289282. So bi-directional automatic winding, 44-hour power reserve, 8 beats per second, quick set hacking, chronometer certification, and all of that pivots on 23 joules. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this James Bond 40th Anniversary Edition.